Now yeah, I've had a funny couple of days. Just before our visitors came, we suddenly found water backing up from the drain into the kitchen. Fortunately, it wasn't a you know a foul drain, a sewage drain. It was just the waste water from the kitchen, which is still pretty unpleasant. We had a blocked drain with a fat burger, but fortunately I got someone out quick to sort it for us. The drain doctor, highly recommended. Cost a bit, but it got the job done. Anyway, then the visitors came, that was good fun. And then it suddenly started raining, having not had rain for blinking months. We had a major thunderstorm, which was rather refreshing. And anyway, I felt in need of a project and I discovered this old U stave that I'd obviously marked out at some point as potentially a primitive. Uh, but it's a bit narrow here and of course you'll notice it's got this massive great knot which I've been ex excavating. It's sound on the belly but I thought what I'd do Yes, I know I could take it flat off and patch over the back of it or bamboo back it, but that's all just too easy. I thought what I'd do is I'd try and sensibly allow for it. So if I measure the width of sapwood either side, which happens to be 22 millimetres and 15 millimetres, which adds up to 37, if I then make the bow 37 millimetre wide there, swell it out round the knot, taper it and make a nice little primitive but we've got this nasty knot here and it's a bit narrow well, I thought well if I lose a bit off the tip that will bring it nearer to the tip where it's less stressed I've got a reasonable amount of length if I make it 64 inches that will be the same length as twister which is my my sort of go-to field bow the other thing you'll notice is it's um, it's not straight. Well, it's straight down one edge, but of course that means it'd end up looking bent. But what I'll do is I'll shape it all up like this, then I'll bend it at the grip because it'll be narrow and deep at the grip to pull the ends in line. You know, it's handsome wood. Nice heart sapwood colouring. I'll press on and we'll see how maintaining a good width of sapwood helps it stand up. You can see I pencilled that in as the grip at some point. Very short grip is what I tend to do. Well there we go. You'll note I haven't roughed out around the grip at all yet. I've left plenty of swell around there. It's probably a bit exaggerated, but it just gives us an idea. All I've done at this end is I've just made it a pretty much a straight line to the full available width at the tip. And it will be much narrower, you know, it will get tapered considerably. I've left a slight swell here because there's a bit of a knot there as well. But you see it's starting to look like, hmm, might be an interesting shaped character bow. And it could be one with a nice hole might even end up going all the way through we'll see i've roughed it out on the bandsaw a little bit more on the other limb and i've shaped the grip a little bit so i've got a weak point here which will allow me to get the sideways bend at that point and then i roughed it through for thickness i made the classic beginner's mistake of assuming that it was homogeneous all the way through and I found that um, I'd gone a bit thin for, actually no, it was this limb. I roughed it through on the bandsaw cutting that way, then found I hadn't left much heartwood at certain points. So I thought, oh my god, I've taken off too much. But that's where experience comes in. You think, oh my god, I've taken off too much, but in fact you've actually got it just about right. And if you cut on an angle, you can see this side. So if I get the width of heartwood correct here, 
and angle the blade to give me too much on the other side I'm all right as it happens I've got away with it on the other side I was much more careful to do it as two cuts leaving a ridge up the middle but I try and flex it on the floor and it's way too stiff at the moment so in actual fact I've got plenty of wood this worrisome knot is now exposed much better and you can see that will just drift out and I can put a peg in there and just work round it leave that little bit of width there so yeah it's got the makings of a nice primitive and we've already got some of the donkey work done it will probably be quite I'll probably leave it quite thick sapwood I might have to take some of the sapwood off and where it looks like I've got virtually no heartwood here of course where the tips narrowed will be into decent heartwood yeah a bit rough and ready I just dived in with the, the band saw and obviously if you're a beginner you probably ruin it doing that whereas I'm fairly experienced and I can ruin it much slower and more carefully yeah that should be a fun project I'm not going to go mad at it and obviously this looks a bit ungainly at the minute but I've allowed too much wood this will get blended in it will look smooth elegant it'll look like a nice swell and you know, well there's a knot on the other side see it's very very solid on this side but you can't always tell even when you think you've dug it all out you probe a bit further and there's little pockets of of rot and what have you yeah that'll be fine that'd been I don't know where this wood came from we've been hanging around for ages ones I'd looked at at some point marked it out and then sort of said well I'll leave it till I feel like it but I do like this style and shape of bow wide and fairly thin even with you there was something on um, Bowyer's um, primitive bow the other day where someone insisted that you likes to be narrow and deep well yeah it works narrow and deep in a long bow but it doesn't mean it doesn't always also work as a primitive style flat bow so anyhow we'll see where it ends up